Hello. So this video, we are going to be covering one of the not quite factoring, but factoring-esque parts of polynomials, which is completing the square. So goal with completing the square is to basically change the format of the, quadru the quadratic form that you're sort of looking at. So in particular, right, if we have this sort of standard form for a quadratic, we want to rewrite it in what you might know as sort of vertex form or some other uh, type of form. Turns out this kind of form is very useful for a number of different things, like finding the vertex, finding inverses, stuff like that. So this will come up more again later uh, in terms of the actual application. For now, we're just going to talk about how to sort of mechanically get it from one to the other. All right. So looking at an example, right? So we have this 3x squared minus 18x minus 4. The goal here is to get it rewritten in that sort of special format. The first thing that we want to do is sort of get rid of the a term because the a term sort of throws everything off. So the first step, factor out that a. So I'm going to factor out a 3, but it turns out I don't need to worry about the constant because if you remember, our, our format has the constant sort of outside the parentheses anyway. So I'm only going to do it from the first two. If you want to do it from all three, you can. There's no sort of reason you can't. It'll, it'll work fine either way. It's just usually easier to do it this way. The next step is I want to form the sort of mm, constant part of that perfect square. So in particular, I'm going to take this sort of b term that's left over, right? Now that I factored out that three, I'm going to take this coefficient to that x, cut it in half, Right? So minus 6 divided by 2 is minus 3. And then I'm going to square it. And that'll give me the number, 9, that I'm going to use in the next step. And in particular, I'm going to add and subtract it inside the parentheses. Okay? And the reason I'm doing this is that by doing that, these three terms, my original 2 and the positive that I added, right, the positive 9 in this case, these three form a perfect square. And in particular, it forms the square of the form x plus whatever that number you cut in half was. So I can then factor that perfect square part, right? So I have x plus that minus 3 gets me this x minus 3 squared, and I still have that minus 9 just sort of tagging along. It's just sort of sitting there. Last but not least, I don't want these like nested uh, parentheses or braces or brackets or whatever we're using. So I'm going to multiply that sort of a term, if we have one, if we do here, I'm going to multiply it back out and then clean everything up, okay? So I'm going to take that 3, multiply it against the x minus 3 squared and the minus 9. So it's just in front of the x minus 3 squared. And then that 3 times minus 9 is minus 27. And then clean everything up, in particular, sort of combining those like terms at the end there, gets me this 3 times x minus 3 quantity squared minus 31, okay? So this is the sort of step-by-step -step mechanical process of completing the square, right? So again, step one, pull out any A term because it sort of just makes life difficult if it's sitting there. So I'm going to sort of pull it out and ignore it for a little while. Then I'm going to take whatever the B term is, the term in front of that X, like the, the regular X, not the X squared. Well, they have factored out the thing in front of X squared. <laughs> so I'm going to take that, cut it in half, and then square it, and then add and subtract that from both, right? So I have... In this case, right, cut it in half, I got minus 3 squared, it's positive 9, add and subtract 9. Now, this sort of first three terms that are here, those make a perfect square. The other term just sort of sits around, doesn't do anything for now. Distribute back out whatever the A term was, and then clean up. Okay, so let's look at another sort of example, work through it carefully. And in particular, I'm going to do an example that's sort of not quite as nice by way of making the point that they don't always have to be nice numbers. Doesn't sort of work out beautifully, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Sometimes it just happens that way. So here, first deal, right? I'm going to factor out that A to start with. But now when I factor out the A, you might notice that I don't have a thing that goes in cleanly. And that just is what it is, right? So I factor out the 4, and it gives me this 9 fourths as my B term. So I'm going to take that B term, cut it in half, right, which means I'm multiplying by one half. So multiply the top and bottom, 9 eighths. Take 9 eighths and square it. So that squares the top and bottom. I get this not so wonderful 81 over 64. And I'm going to add and subtract that inside those original, right, uh, parentheses, if you want to use parentheses, or in this case, we're using brackets. 
So adding and subtracting 81 over 64, Again, not a nice number, but by design, that's gonna tell me that these first three are gonna to have to be a perfect square where I'm doing X plus whatever this sort of original cut in half term was. So I can collapse that in, right? So I have X plus that nine eighths, that quantity squared. I still have the minus 81 over 64. Now I have to distribute the four, right? So distributing that four gets me 81 over 16, right? And that's just because multiplying the fractions, I can sort of cancel the common factor of four in the top and bottom down here, which gets me 81 over 16. Then add one, do that by adding, right, getting a common denominator, so making it 16 over 16, adding the like things, this one's negative, so I'm gonna end up with this negative 65 over 16. That's where this number comes from. And of course, because I distributed the four, the four is sort of hanging out in front of this piece here. So that is the completed the square sort of end there. Now, again, I want to mention that this is not technically a factoring sort of process because this thing is not ending up in a stuff times stuff, you know, sort of product of things because I'm still ending up with some plus or minus a term at the end, right? In this case, 65 sixteenths or whatever. So this isn't a factoring sort of technique all on its own, but it is useful for a number of places. And in particular, this is where we get the quadratic formula from, which we'll see uh, in a future sort of bit. So what did we do? Well, we introduced completing the square and we sort of went through the idea here where it's this very mechanical process at first glance at least, uh, taking something in this sort of standard form, right? AX squared plus BX plus C. And we would take out the A, take the new sort of B that isn't the original B, right? If we, if we factored out a piece, cut that thing in half, square it, add and subtract those terms, collapse the perfect square that it made, distribute the A back in, right, add up all the terms. There's a bunch of steps to it, but hopefully it's sort of not crazy where each of these steps come from, right? That The sort of weirdest part is that cut in half and square bit, but it sort of makes sense that our goal, right, is to make a perfect square. That's why we're squaring the thing. So using that, we can get it into this sort of vertex form, which at least at the moment I am claiming is useful in a number of other places, which we'll see soon. Okay, so that is that.